Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about engineers in meetings. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, after, as a software engineer, how do you block time for programming when you are pulled into meetings and production issues and all that stuff? Well, uh, you um, can use one of my tried and true methods. Uh, I have two tricks, uh, but I want to say something first, and that is that the, there's a lot of software developers who don't like meetings, and I tell people over and over and over, there is a difference between an unnecessarily an, an, an unnecessary meeting that you can prevent and a meeting that you actually are useful in. Because meeting is part of the experience, guys, and meetings are usually either a, a symptom of that there is a lack of information or understanding or trust or there are like misalignments, etc., etc., between people and they need to communicate, right? And so what I tell people is that you need to learn what makes the need for a meeting, and we we're, we're going to talk about that. But and then for production issues and bugs and so forth, that's sort of your like that you should never prioritize if if it's a critical system problem that you will you have to prioritize the bugs and the production issues above all else because that is a major 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 issue and the coding that you do is in make sure that it, your coding is there to make sure that there are no issues in production. That is also a problem, but uh, I have a system for that as well. So let's talk about just the the way that you make sure that you're only in meetings where you need to be in a meeting first and foremost so the first thing you can do which is use this with with care because it's very dangerous to do this is to there is this concept that some people use which is like every company I've ever worked for have this in some flavor they get bored of the fact that they can never get quote unquote anything real done, which is usually what the product people are saying, because they have, you know, they have so many meetings that they don't have time to prepare for their meetings, so they need some quality time, quote unquote, where they can just focus on their work, right? So they come up with this idea, and it's always the same idea: let's have meeting-free days. And I've never seen it work, not even once. Everybody says that it works, but I've never seen it being um, abided by, and. The reason is very simple, because when you call a meeting, you have a need, and you need to get answers to questions, or you need to align, or something like that. And the problem is that when you have more than one of those people, and everybody has a different schedule, it's very hard to justify saying just saying that no I need this free time to do because it's viewed as free time it's like that's the thing right because if it's not a meeting it's culturally viewed as not as important as the meeting because more meeting a meeting means that many people need to be involved they have depend you have dependencies etc etc and here's the kicker to all of that the amount of meetings you have stands in proportion to how much responsibility you have or how many pe dependencies uh, you have or how many people are dependent on you which means that even if you have meeting free days all you're doing is that you're forcing the meeting for into the future and you will have in in like it before you know it and I see this happen all the time you're going to have double and triple bookings and you're going to have people complaining to you because they can never get a hold of you because you're always in meetings and so forth and that is a problem that will not be solved by having you know these free time things it's actually you know you, you, you it's a much fundamental more fundamental problem you are the problem you have created a situation where you are needed in every single situation and since that is the case sure you can say that I should be able to focus on this thing but what's more effective is to make yourself less of a dependency because then you don't have to be in all those meetings and that's why I was telling you that the real solution to this problem is to figure out why do you need all these meetings and figure out what makes uh, what creates the need for th for the meetings and so what usually happens is that uh, these meeting free days they only really work for a little sh while uh, because sooner or later somebody's going to make an exception like very quickly because they have to 
because if that, that critical thing that they absolutely have to do that cannot wait based on the such is the system for I mean shit guys I've been talk I've talked to people where you get 15 minutes if you're lucky a month with them sure if they cut off, cut cut out like a few more hours a week, then you're gonna see them every well every half year, like every six months, something like that. That that's not a sustainable solution. The way that you can solve it though is because people will uh, because you will also be put in socially awkward posi positions if you have that uh, that rule to to uh, if it's not being if it's not respected. So what I tell people, and you use this at your own peril is to do not make the mistake of saying meeting free day in your calendar or like expose the fact that this time slot that you have registered is something that is skippable something that is can be viewed as optional name it something really intimidating something like architect i mean for the co if programmers uh, system architecture alignment discussion or review or something like that make it sound really really scary and when people ask you about it you're very vague on what exactly you're doing but you try to involve as many people oh, I'm talking I'm doing like um, we're looking over the code making sure that it's actually working as intended and then we are doing like peer reviews etc etc in order to make sure that the, that the system is up and running etc uh, what you're basically trying to pseudo uh, explain, which is one of those beautiful parts about being a tech wizard. Nobody has the fucking clue of what you're saying. Because what I just tried to explain in a very vague way was that I'm coding and you're doing my code review. There. Problem solved. You now have an endless supply of time because you can basically at all, any time make anybody feel like you are doing them a favor to be in that meeting because you are taking time away from this other very important meeting, which is not a meeting really, it's just you doing your job uh, in order to be in present in their meeting. Uh, but the thing that kills off meetings is by you have to identify why you have the meeting. An example would be I had that discussion actually yesterday with my coworkers where they had a problem where their handoffs between the designers and the engineers were always it was always an issue because the designers never had like a proper good state on the designs the artworks that they were providing there was always miss uh, misses in like expectations and a lot of different visual states that were not part of the things so I said do this create a template artboard where each artboard is labeled with the intended state that you want so anything everything from like uh, the pristine state success state error state uh, loading states dark mode light mode etc you just label all of those you basically create a design form and you say to your designer that i will not pick up your with this artboard uh, or i won't start working on this until all of those things are addressed done the reason why that is necessary is because what they used to do, which is very ineffective, is that instead of having a contract of basic expectations of what has to happen in order to you know, move to the next step, they just did Slack messages back and forth and frustration and so, uh, ensues because no one has a work process that is structured enough to consistently deliver results. And the reason why they don't have that is because they haven't standardized the agreement or the contract between the departments. And so I said the communication that is necessary now, a communication in general is a very good thing, but not when it's unnecessary. I did the analogy, what if we couldn't agree on how to, how to order things at a restaurant? Well, then every single person who came into a new restaurant would have to go and ask, please, how do I order here? Oh, please, how do I, like all this waste. And that is what standardization is all about. It's the same thing with, you know, laws or whatever. If we agree on that there's a certain procedure for certain things that are always basically the same, and we make sure that we all respect that part, then we can cut away a bunch of unnecessary dialogue and just focus on the things that matter and in a meeting situation that is exactly it meetings are usually a direct 
result of that you cannot standardize anything within your organization and if you always have the idea that you're just going to talk it through you will you will run out of time very very quickly and there because there is simply no way for you to create a situation where you don't need a meeting because aligning people requires communication in, unless they already know what the answer or like the outcome of that communication is going to be so I tell people make sure that you invest in good you know documentation for things that are like always going to be something that people ask you about like I, my favorite one is step like uh, to do list or step guides if you are always pulled into how do I do this how do I do that well just fucking write it down Ooh, step by step do this then that and that and that and just put that fucking list up so that you just tell people in worst case scenario they ask you oh how do I do that point to the list and say yeah you can check the documentation meeting not necessary you do know now now not have to do that part same thing with the designers and so forth you don't have to have a long extended meeting or like so forth with other departments if they're when it comes to handoffs and syncs and so forth if they already know that there is a standard for doing certain things then you can at the very least reduce the amount of time you need to invest in the meeting you can never get completely rid of them because meetings are usually as i said it's just a it's just a symptom of the fact that people need to align to feel safe in that they know what's going on etc 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 and the only cure as i said to it is that people don't feel the necess the necessity to clarify anything and how do you feel that way well if everything is obvious to you how it's going to work which is standardization incidentally why would you need to have a meeting and discuss it unless you know you're just going to have a good time and talk to each other so what I want you to take away from this is that my tried and true tips for reducing meetings is number one, make sure that you don't need them in the first place and that is usually easiest by figuring out what causes the meeting in the first place and it's usually down to misalignments or that people don't really know things or they have answers, uh, questions that they need answering and so forth. So start identifying those common repeatable things and start documenting the things so that you can just give them a playbook or something like that if they don't know how to do things or if they're unsure about you know when you have a process where you know you you don't people on one side of the fence depending on how you work doesn't they don't meet the expectations of the deliverables that you expect then then just create a template for them and say i expect you to fill up these things if it's not there we are not going to move forward with this thing so that way you don't have to be frustrated because that's the my favorite thing the gateway system i create a quality check for you in this case it was like for the designers but it's no different from unit testing or coverage checks or whatever you just set a gateway saying that you pass this thing we'll go on to the next step otherwise you're gonna get a bounce back easy pc that means that you don't have to spend as much time like aligning and you don't have to get frustrated when you don't get you know the expectations met and then lastly if you're truly truly desperate lie about time what you're doing in your time sp uh, time spaces blocking off things with like nice to like oh free time my focus time etc etc uh, is a decent way of doing it but i've always found that just make the meeting uh, blocking where you're just allocating time for yourself make it sound really really scary uh, because most people uh, are very like it's socially hard sometimes to justify I should just be able to sit by myself and do my thing but very few people will question a software developer says that he's he or she is in a architectural meeting about the f technical vision uh, of the code or something like that that sounds scary as fuck have a great day